and Corey Pond. Well, what can you say? Devon sunshine, bank holiday weekend. Seems like half the country got stuck on the motorway on the way down here the weekend. I'm lucky enough to be down here already. Right, we can catch up on what we missed last week. So, why am I got a shower down here? Several people have asked, why haven't I got a shower filter? Well, I don't need a shower filter. I've got my veg filter. Now, I'm not going to go into the pond cycle, nitrite cycle, um, and everything. It's everybody should know it off by art as a koi keeper. You should know that you start with ammonia, which then goes to nitrite, and then nitrate. It's more on the final product, nitrate. That's what you need to get rid of. Now, people trickle in as well. I don't use a trickling system here. The only water I top up is what I top up um, by doing water changes. When I clean the filters, trickling is a good system, but it's a constant amount of water going in. If you're running a drum filter, it's ideal because it tops it up as your drum filter is using the water to clean the filter. It tops your system up. Um, fantastic. But we'll whip over and have a look at the veg filter a minute. And we'll see what's going on in there. It's really been growing the last few weeks. Everything's catching up. I've also got a surprise. So if you've actually got a ponding channel out there, and you've just started recently, this year say, or end of last year, you start a new channel. I'm going to be uh, doing a few surprises like this through the summer as well. But I've got a surprise for one of the ponding channels. I'm not going to say which one at the moment, but it'll be obvious when we stumble across it over here. Got a little present for you. Right. Fairly early in the morning down here. Fish are having their breakfast, as you'll have seen on the intro. Fish is having their breakfast at the moment. Over here, into the veg filter. Right. Now we can see what's going on here. This is the watercress I planted from Tesco's the other week. That's flying along. That's going to need uh, potting up and uh, going into the uh, corner basket. Uh, I'll wave in front of the camera. I'll uh, stick a clip up here somewhere. That's going to be going into that this week. So I'm off for the week. I'm lucky. I get the school holidays as well. Also hoping to get up around and see James. But the reason I ain't got a shower filter is I've got this. This monster growing at the back here literally a huge damn thing because one of the biggest nitrate eaters you will get it loves the stuff so does this watercress but growing this sorts the final part of the filtration out on the pond all the plants in the veg filter here are only planted in gravel, there's no soil in there whatsoever. Even the lilies are just in baskets full of gravel. So they're doing their bit as well. But the entire filter system here is just living on what's in the water. So the plants are taking out the nitrates. Mother nature's best way of doing it. On my first pond, which was further down the garden, where I really started playing around with veg filters, and I had a filter down there that was uh, about seven, eight foot long, two foot wide, 18 inches deep. And come the uh, last few years of that pond, I had a load of bulrushes growing in it. Now, they were the best thing I've ever come across for goblin nitrates. They love the stuff. This Mimbulus Nimbulus here also loves the stuff. When I put the cover over the pond in the winter, it does carry on growing through the winter. It slows down greatly, but it does carry on growing. So it's goblin nitrates all the time. And as the winter, as the amount of food drops down, obviously the amount of nitrates in the water go down. I'm quite low on nitrates in the tap water here. I do get a reading, but I get near zero reading in the pond. I've also got this moss stuff, which I'll uh, show you around this side. I've got this moss that has started to grow in the pond. 
all over the place. It's not growing in the veg forest, it's not growing in the pond, it's growing in here. And apparently that grows all year round as well. That's fantastic. As you can see I've got lily flowers poking up here all over the place. The lilies are really crowded in here. I think it's full of capacity here. Everything's been running fine down here. So I'll be sorting some of this watercress into the main pond in the corner basket this week. It's just so nice to have the sunshine down here. I've got the brushes in the bottom of the vortex. One of the other things I've come up against, which I'll slip a clip up for you, the result. Mm. This is what we've got. Loads and loads of little bits. I want to say little bits, some of them are quite big. But it's peeling off the walls like a skin. Most peculiar. I don't know if I actually prefer the clover leaf, because at least with that it does it, and then, boof, it's all gone. But this stuff has been ongoing now. For days, and you can see it's like black bits of skin. I'm hoping you can catch that on camera. I've stirred the whole pond right up. It's uh, like a cauldron. The filters are left. Soon suck this out, but it's like bits of skin off the pond walls. Most peculiar. Didn't get this last time with the resolve last year, but definitely had it this time. Interesting. Now, what I've had coming away from the walls of the pond for the last two weeks, I'll describe as a skin. It's been peeling itself off the walls of the ponds, uh, pond, and it's dead algae, and it's been an absolute bloody mess. Right, it's taken two weeks to get it out and I've been sweeping the pond walls and bottoms every day, every other day with a brush and sucking it into the uh, vortex. Now I'll stick a clip here running of what uh, the vortex looks like when it's in. It's horrible stuff. This here is the uh, state of my vortex. I'm hoping you can see it. I actually cleaned this one yesterday and this black skin like stuff is just coming through I've got the brushes in the bottom which seem to be helping but it's uh, sort of semi buoyant and it's just floating around I think I'll uh, run the pond on maximum all day full bore give it two or three sweeps through the day try and get the worst of this out but I've done the pond in the last couple of weeks I've swept the pond probably twice and noticed this stuff coming off but uh, it's already got to a point now where it's uh, just coming off in sheets and swaves like if you actually had a drum filter with this stuff it would be an absolute bloody nightmare because it sticks like yeah you've seen it sticks like shit this would stick to the inside of a screen choke up every blooming thing. Pop down in the comments if anybody else has said uh, this kind of thing after using Resolve. I'd be very interested. I'm almost tempted to go back to the clover leaf if I need to do it again because at least it's kind of over and done within a week, week and a bit. This is just uh, like an ongoing pain in the butt. Slimy, black, like a skin. I, I'll describe it as flaked off wet paint that's what it looks like it's horrible now if you had a drum filter I would imagine this would cause you all sorts of problems it's uh, not actually stopped the ants are running here but what a bloody mess in the vortex I've been dumping the vortex sort of every day for the last fortnight just to get rid of the bloody stuff absolutely horrible black slimy ugh. The walls are almost clean and they're starting to go green again. So I will be putting in the last of the resolve. I've got a little bit left, which should see it through another couple of months. But I don't know with that stuff. After watching uh, Leon up at Budget Koi Keeping, 
back on the uh, cloverleaf blanket answer I think I'm gonna go back to that stuff it might bugger your pond up for like three four days where you can't see your fish but the stuff goes white a few days after that lightens up the weed and then the filters suck it out you get like a week and a half and it's out it's gone from the pond this stuff this black slimy stuff it's taken me like two weeks to get rid of plus the initial treating of it it's like three weeks to try and uh, get rid of the stuff whereas the clover leaf nailed it so I think I'm gonna go back to the clover leaf I hope yours is clearing up there Leon we won't mention that damn weed but it's bloody horrible right the surprise I had so there's been quite a few new channels on YouTube this year this is one I've started following I do mucker how do you want these two? hey Just testing the laser the other day after resetting it all completely because the kids mess it up all the bloody time I had to do some cutting so I made these up get out of me on the U, um, Facebook page get me an address and I'll whack them off to you in the post look bloody handsome on the front of your pond mucker so they'll be coming your way as soon as you get me your address right it's that week as I say the bank holiday week I'm lucky I'm off in the school I only work four days anyway but I got four days off plus the bank holiday so it's a long week for me I will get up round and see James I think he's expecting me he's over that way somewhere probably sat out by his pond or out in the ground this morning scratching his bits wondering what he's going to do today because he's going to find something to do so I'll get a hold of him you get a hold of me mucker and I'll get those in the post to you it's a present alright ok let's swap you back up here a minute Ooh. also the fish been showing a few signs of a bit of friskiness water temp yesterday was up 21 it's nearly 19 this morning so it dropped a couple of degrees overnight but going to be a sunny day and the fish are starting to get a bit frisky I might whop the net in in a bit and pull a couple out for a scrape we'll have to see right, let's get you back up here Okay, so this is the tray that I put in the corner, stick a pot in it, pot sticks in that and the crest goes on it, that'll put some crest in the pond. I really struggled last year, I couldn't get the water crest to grow, absolute nightmare, I just did not want to grow, couldn't understand it, obviously I've taken some out of the water, it might have been the clover relief, I'm not sure, but I tried crest two, three times, it just died off, it just wouldn't grow. This one's suffering a bit now bashed around actually over the winter a crack or two in it but I've drilled holes at the ends of the cracks so that will serve a, another summer but, uh, I'm gonna have to have a look at making a new one of those I think right if you haven't already please smash that like and subscribe I'm gonna be popping some fish out and I will video over the next few weeks because uh, I don't have my fish out often I've got a black one in the pond that you barely ever see, black gun grey metallic. I've uh, promised Leon up at budget pond keeping. I'll pull him out so he can have a look at it. She's an uh, old girl, got to be 15, 16 years old. Gun grey metallic black. And she doesn't feed off the top often. She feeds off the bottom, damned awkward fish. And being black, you seldom see her. But I want to pop a few out and have uh, a bit of a measure, which should be fun. But I don't normally do that. But uh, I've got a blue measuring bowl without a measuring tape in the bottom, so we'll have to drop a ruler in it. I used to measure them years ago when I had them all as babies, because all the fish here in the pond started off about six inches long, nothing bigger than that. The youngest ones are chags, 
um, they went in the summer that um, the pond was finished. So they're getting on four years old and uh, they've got to be up the other side of 50 now, I would have thought. They're, uh, the twins are two quite big things. They're monsters and uh, there's a uh, light colored chag there as well. And I just want to see what size they've got to in that time. But there we go for this week. So there, you don't have to have a shower filter. They've got their drawbacks, the shower filters. Um, winter time, unless you're heated, they don't do much. If you buy one of the really expensive, really nice stainless steel showers, you give yourself even more of a problem in the winter. You've got to insulate that thing up. It acts like a radiator. If you run that water through it, it'll cool that water down quicker than going through a car radiator. They're amazing heat sinks. Okay, get the sun on them, they'll warm the water up lovely. Put them outside in the wind and the cold in the winter and it'll do exactly this opposite, cool that water down quickly. So they either want to be indoors, hidden away, or with a cover over them in the winter. All right, but we're going to all these kind of things over the summer, how to filter the different stuff and the uh, ways that I've found around it over the years. But for that, you have to catch me in another video, so please smash in, like, and subscribe. From down here in sunny Devon, I'm going to be enjoying the bank holiday weekend. So from me, bye for now. Mucker, get out of me at Facebook for those plaques, okay? Because they'll be on the front of your pond. I'll catch you all in the next one.